in order for me to get verified. I have close to 200,000 followers on Instagram, a million on Facebook, and almost that many on Twitter can't understand why it's not been verified because verification would stop impersonation. According to authorities at Instagram, only some public figures, celebrities and brands have verified badges. I've reached out to verified people I know and asked them how to get it done. And I said, Jamal, there are only three ways that you can get it done. Be famous with a ton of followers. Work with a digital agency. Or enlist somebody at the company to get it done for you. And when you know empowerment, that that's where the problem has come in for Instagram. They've had to do an investigation internally because there's now become a black market fostered by their own employees because there are now so many people willing to pay just to appear popular. We are a part of a generation that has confused popularity with currency. People want followers, but have no funds. It's embarrassing how people will take likes over legitimate relationships. Whatever you do, please don't let being popular become more important than having purpose. Under this current administration, with Harvey Weinstein turning himself in, Bill Cosby being found guilty, there's a movement around sexism. With a heightened awareness because of Waffle House and Starbucks and now the NFL, there's a heightened awareness about racism. But there's very little discussion about an issue that I want to introduce to you today. And that issue is called rankism. Would you write that down for me, please? Rankism. Rankism is rating people as somebodies and nobodies. You have people who have been afflicted with rankism. And so when they meet you, hear me, they want to know what you do before they know who you are. So based off of what you do, that then sets the stage as to how they ought to treat you. We live in a culture that people are more interested in what you do than who you are or what you've been through. It is, millennials, a cyber caste system that separates alleged somebodies from nobodies. As a consequence, people treat you based off of the power they think you possess. You don't find it peculiar or strange that the police never mistake a phone for a weapon when it's in the hand of a white teenager? It's because they perceive black people as being powerless. What the perpetrators fail to realize, which is your asset, is that God gives power to the faint and to those who have no might. He increases their strength. The battle then becomes, how do I become somebody so that I'm recognized and therefore respected? 
Dave Chappelle in his most recent Netflix comedy skit says he was with a friend recently and the police pulled him over. The friend felt anxious, but Dave Chappelle felt calm because he knew he was famous. Both of them were black in an expensive car and his friend was frantic and he was at ease because Dave Chappelle said, fame is my force field. Friends, fame is an emergency exit from the ghetto called low self-esteem. Fame is, Aunt Cynthia, what um, would be contrasted from the 1940s and 40s and 50s from when light-complected blacks pass for being white. It's um, what happened in the late 70s and early 80s when gays wanted to pass for being straight. Belonging is synonymous with deserving. Nobodies are marginalized to the point of insignificance. By virtue of the fact that we're created by God to be social, isolation is a sentence of deprivation. You gotta make sure that your drive to become famous doesn't make you infamous. Sleeping with everybody wanting to be loved and you end up getting labeled. You mistreat everybody just to get ahead, only to wake up and realize you're behind. I want you to write this down. It's not even for you, it's for your friend who's always taking selfies. R write this down and I want, you to, I want you to send this text to them and tell them my pastor told me to tell you this. Recognition is to the self what food is to the body. Recognition is to the ego what food is to the body. And like food, too little or too much can be harmful. If you don't eat enough food, you're anorexic, anemic, dehydrated. Too much food, obese. What happens when you need too much recognition? Can't go to sleep without checking your page. Wake up to see how many likes you got. Mad and take it personal because they not following you. Wanting to feel special is the top motive of those who want to be famous. Susan Frisk of Princeton University said, you got to be careful of people who are in intensive care because they are under the curse of idolatry. Watch this, from worshiping themselves. Attention for the insecure is adrenaline. God, I'm preaching better than y'all are saying. I said, attention for the insecure is adrenaline. So they get their whole self-worth based off of the affirmation and likes, watch this, of people who don't matter. So you got 500 Facebook friends. But when it's time for you to move, you ain't got two people to help you pack. <laughs> you got a thousand likes, now you're an Instagram model. You ain't in no magazine, you ain't done no photo shoots. DM for booking serious inquiries only. Just look straight ahead, please. People whose main motivation in life 
is fame are often met with disappointment because they always want more and as a consequence they end up emotionally damaged. They want the fame but can't handle the light of the stage and don't understand that the light on the stage shines and it burns. Instead of wanting to become, they just want to be arrived. You want more fame, but you don't want more faith. You don't want more of a family. You don't want more friends. You just want to be known. And you don't know what comes with it. I was lecturing about a year ago and a group of young preachers stopped me in the airport and said, Rembrandt, we want to be like you! I said, you sure? Are you sure? Say, yeah, we want to be like you! We watch all your tapes! I said, you, you want to be like me? I said, yeah, we, we, we want to be like you. I said, you, you sure you want to be like me? Yeah, we, we, we want to be like you. I, I, I said, you want your car in the Baltimore sun. You want to be attached to people who you don't know. You want to fill out restraining orders for 12 people a year. You want the IRS to always have you under investigation when you file. People want to be you and don't know the cost of being you. You got to be careful of folk that want your car but don't want your payment. God, I can't hear nobody in here. It takes a whole lot just for you to get out the bed in the morning. And folk who want to be in your shoes can't fit your flip-flops. They got no idea how much it costs just for you to be who you are. In Acts chapter 19, Jesus has been crucified. And I don't know whether you all can handle it or not. I don't even know if they've ever given it to you in the lowest common denominator. Jesus was crucified, not because he preached. Not because of his miracles. Y'all ain't gonna like it. He got crucified. Here's the bottom line and nobody wants to discuss it. He got crucified because he got popular. He got peak popular and people in the church couldn't stand it. And I, I want you to know that many of you are getting killed by folk who are mad because folk recognize you and identify the gift and the call and the assignment on your life. As long as you are underground, nobody paid you any attention. But as soon as your light came on, His fame upset the establishment. God, I can't hear anybody. And some, some of you don't even know you are a moving target. You are a moving target. Why? Because you won't sit still. I got to show you something. Y'all ain't going to believe it. Did you all know? Did you recognize? Have you not observed that there are multiple police at the airport? Multiple police at the train station, multiple police, y'all ain't gonna believe it, at the bus station, but there are no police at Druid Hill Park. Pastor, why are you telling me that? Because there's only security required for folk that are going somewhere. And the longer you stay in the same place, the enemy isn't after you. But those of you that believe in your heart, God is getting ready to take me somewhere. That's why the attack on your life is heavy. And at the time of the text, Paul is basically on the run, trying to establish churches across the Middle East. And he gets to a small hamlet of a town called Ephesus. 
where he asked certain disciples, have you received the Holy Ghost? Hallelujah. I got to give you all this because I didn't preach on Pentecost Sunday. He asked them, have you received the Holy Ghost? Y'all ain't going to believe it. To which disciples said, we've never heard of it. God, y'all don't like this here. They working in the church. They got titles and an imposition. But they have no evidence of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I'm telling y'all, it's it may be a shakeup around here because there's too many people that are working and functioning and operating, but got no Holy Ghost in them. And I, I, I don't need you here holding no political position if you ain't filled with the Holy Ghost with the evidence of your lifestyle. The Holy Ghost, watch this, has got to get into the leadership. Hallelujah. Because it is the Holy Ghost, well, hear me, that has got to become famous for the millennial generation. Hallelujah. You too many of your kids don't know who the Holy Ghost is. They know video games, yeah, they know Yeezys, they know the Migos, but they don't know the Holy Ghost. But the Bible says your son and your daughter, they shall prophesy. I need to look down your row and tell them this summer, we gonna make the Holy Ghost famous. Whoever comes in this church this summer, it's gonna get baptized with the Holy Ghost. It's gonna get filled from the top of their head to the sole of their feet. Hallelujah. Huh? Thank you, Holy God. You may be seated. I feel something. Get ready to pray. Hallelujah. Be seated, please, right where you are. I need you to take your neighbor by the hand, please. Take that neighbor by the hand and pull on that hand. The Bible said that he laid hands on them and they got filled with the Holy Ghost. And when they got filled with the Holy Ghost, the Bible said, this is for the apostolics that are watching, they didn't just speak in tongues, but they prophesied. If you are fully anointed, you got to stop prophesying. I need you to prophesy to whoever's hand you hold it. Pull on that hand and tell them it's going to get better for you. Y'all got the wrong neighbor. I said prophesy. This is going to be the best year of your life. I said prophesy. Your enemies are going to be scattered. Prophesy. Your bills are going to get paid. Prophesy. Will you prophesy to yourself? I am the head and not the tail. I am above and not beneath. I am a giver and not a borrower. Prophesy. Huh. Hallelujah. Be seated, please. Thank you. Thank you, I feel it right through here. Hallelujah, I just need a hundred of you to help your pastor. Just shout out loud, it's gotta get better. It's gotta get better. You ain't talking to nobody in particular. I just need you to shout it down your own. It's gotta get better. In my body, it's gotta get better. In my finances, it's gotta get better. In my marriage, it's gotta get better. With my children, it's gotta get better. Huh. Huh. Thank you, Holy God. You may be seated. Eh. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Thank you. Hi -ya -ya. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy God. I feel my grandmother right through here. I need you to just pull on that neighbor right through here and tell him I'm trying not to scream. I'm trying not to tear up this road. But you don't know what he's done for me. You don't know how he picked me up and, 
He clothed me in my right mind. You, you don't know how the devil thought he had me. But I, I got away. He, she, Kaya. Thank you, Holy God. Be seated, please. He said, they got the Holy Ghost. I was waiting for you to show up. They got the Holy Ghost. Be seated, please. I'm reading the text. I'm in Acts chapter 13. Hallelujah. Chapter 19. I'm in verse number 12. Hallelujah. Be seated, please. I got to show you this. And we get ready to take off. Would you be seated? The 50 of you, please. The 17 of you, be seated, please. Hallelujah. The 9 of you, would you be seated, please? I got to show you something. It says, and after they laid hands, and after they prophesied, this is for 100 of you, and immediately they got healed God said because of how you just shouted whatever you've been dealing with healing is getting ready to come I can't get up out of you here he said because they prophesied not only did they get healed but they got delivered God said if y'all shout again whatever had you bound is getting ready to be under your feet whatever's been attacking your child is is getting ready to be shut down. The Holy Spirit doesn't need speeches. Be seated, please. The Holy Spirit doesn't need speeches. The Holy Spirit needs demonstration. Hallelujah. So, so if, if you need to know if somebody is really filled with the Holy Spirit, don't listen to what they say. Watch what they do. God, God, God I can't hear my mind. Because when you got the Holy Ghost, your actions speak louder than your word. There's got to be a manifestation of the anointing that's on your life. So, so. I know. And so this new group just got anointed. They start speaking in tongues. They start prophesying. And they are excited about their gift. And just when you get filled with the Holy Ghost, when you pull yourself off, off the floor, mascara running down your face, you done chipped a nail. Your hair look like you've been in the Sahara Desert. You, I need you to receive this. Watch this. It's not until after you get the Holy Spirit, watch this, that evil spirits are assigned. You, don't, don't, don't tell me about your worship if you ain't had no warfare. God, 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 I can't hear nobody because anybody that's really filled with the Holy Ghost, only 20 hood praisers gonna get it. If you're filled with the Holy Ghost, that means you had to kill something. If, if you ain't had to deal with nothing serious, then you really ain't been baptized in the Holy Ghost until you had to cast something down. And evil spirits were assigned, watch this, to the ones who just got filled. Ones just got touched. Ones that just had a de demonstration. And uh, watch the bravado of the devil. When the devil thinks he has you overpowered, he starts talking to you sideways. Because he don't know what power you really have. If, if you want to know what people really think about you, be quiet and let them talk. Sooner or later, they're going to expose themselves. God, y'all ain't saying nothing to me because they don't understand the weight that you carry. Elbow the person beside you and tell them, I've had to check a couple of people. 
because they thought they could handle me any kind of way because they didn't know the anointing that comes with me they they didn't understand that when I come it ain't just me I bring a whole entourage the Father the Son and the Holy Ghost all of us are riding deep together be seated and uh, I only got two more times to tell you that. Um, would you be seated, please? Um, you, you working today? Come, come, yeah, come on, please. That'd be good. Thank you. I didn't know if you was on holiday. Um, I want to make an announcement um, because this is your first service for the summer. So your first service of the summit, I wanted to um, really just transmit what I heard God say. <clears throat> the devil started talking slick. And said to these new initiates, these new ordinates, said to them all, Jesus we know. Paul we know. But we don't know who you are. For some of you, this message ain't even really going to hit to be applicable until July. Some of you August. Some of you need it now. If you don't get any other message that I preach to you this summer, I want you to please get this one. I need it in your car. Need it in your house. You don't even need to play it on regular rotation. You'll know when the right time is. <clears throat> and those who have just got um, initiated, those that just got ordained, tried to cast out devils. And the devils laughed under their breath. Said, Jesus, we know. Paul, we know. We don't know who you are. This is the only sermon that I really need y'all to have. If I don't see you for a couple of weeks, I need you to have this in your heart. Um, they just got filled with the Holy Ghost. Just got ordained, just got initiated. They've spoken in tongues, they prophesied, and now demons are assigned to them. And they try to lay hands on demons. And the demons don't fall. They don't go in a convulsion. They look at him straight in the eye. They say, Jesus, we know. <clears throat> Paul, we know. But we don't know you. I'm so grateful you all came. I, I didn't even expect this many of you all on a holiday Sunday. But if you're here, I might as well give it to you what your pastor been praying for you this week. Not for you to be debt free, not for you to be a millionaire, for not for you to get a raise, not for you to be, get a promotion. Here's my prayer for you this summer. My prayer is this summer you become famous. Watch this. To demons. <clears throat> this summer demons are going to know who you are. And because of the power that rests in you, they gonna be scared to touch the stuff you love. Because they know when you show up, demons are gonna be killed and assassinated and are gonna be leveled to the ground. Devils are gonna know you by name. They gonna know your name. You get ready to be famous in hell. <laughs> because of the Holy Ghost that's in you. Lift up that hand. I'm going to release an anointing of popularity. <clears throat> what demons will know me, Pastor? And will be scared to be around me? and will be intimidated to be close to me 
Lift that hand. I'm going to tell you what demon going to know you. The demon called cancer. Oh, God, God, I can't hear nobody in here. I, I need that hand lifted. What demon is going to know me? That demon called poverty. The demon of low self-esteem. The demon of anxiety. The demon of peer pressure. I can't hear anybody. The demon of emotional imbalance. We'll all know your name. Why? Because you're going to be known for casting them out. No demon will be safe around you. No demon will get comfortable around you. And so demons will be forced to expose themselves. God help me because they know what you represent. Lift that hand because I want you to receive it. So find it not strange. When this summer people become distant. When people who you used to be close to start falling back. Don't think it crazy when you don't get return phone calls. Because the Holy Ghost on your life is so undeniable that demons will be scared of you. Hallelujah. You may be seated. They tell you, um, they tell you, I don't know from first-hand experience, but this, they tell you, your first day in jail, I don't know from first-hand experience, this is what they tell me, said first day in jail, um, you just got to fight somebody. It don't matter who it is, what size they are, you got to fight somebody so that the record is sure that you ain't no punk. Somewhere within your first 24 hours, you got to swing on somebody so that they know you are not to be played with. God, I can't hear anybody. This is your first 24. There's a new anointing on your life. And the anointing on your life will not let you stay idle. Here it is because the enemy needs to know you are not to be played with. Would you look at the person beside you tell them, I got you, I got you. Hallelujah. Look at him, tell them, I can tell you don't like the fight. But because we in the same cell, I'm going to take this one for you. When I shout this time, this ain't even for me. I'm going to kill your demon. I can't hear nobody when I open up my mouth this time. Whatever's been attacking you, whatever been dogging your children, whatever been eating at your hell, I'm getting ready to fight it. I, I dare somebody to open up your mouth and lift up your voice like you are signed to anoint somebody. You're verified. Let your pastor pray for you, please. Lift up that hand. You're verified. Hallelujah. Heaven recognizes you. Hell is afraid of you. You're verified. You are a certified believer. You are anointed from the top of your head to the sole of your feet. You're verified. Lift up that hand as high as you see yourself going. How about Shana? Thank you, Holy God. Hallelujah, softly, Sean. I feel this glory getting ready to blow through this room. I said, lift up that hand as high as you can. Hallelujah. I was in Dubai this week. I'm in Dubai this week. Lift that hand up. Watch this. I'm in Dubai this week and they're in the middle of Ramadan. High and holy Muslim holiday. 40,000 people going to the mosque a day just for prayer. And I'm in Dubai. Y'all ain't gonna believe it. Middle of a Muslim nation. 
in the middle of an Islamic holiday. And I'm walking around to buy wearing a hat that says Christian soldier. Oh God, I can't hear nobody. People looking at me funny, looking at me strange, pointing at my hat. God help me in here. Some, somebody came to me and said, man, you can't wear that hat here. It's Ramadan. I said, I don't care what it is. God help me. This is the day of Pentecost for me. I'm telling you, when you are anointed, you can walk anywhere. When, when God is with you, you refuse to be intimidated. Why? Because you are a Christian soldier. I need that hand lifted. I want to play in the hedge fence of protection around you. Because in case you missed anything, last week all over the globe, people were celebrating Pentecost and the birth of the church. And they neglected to tell you that when you get filled is when you get attacked. Did you hear what I just said? When you get filled is when you get attacked. I'm praying for you, but watch this while I'm praying. I want, as those hands are lifted, it's not a stick up, it's a surrender. As those hands are lifted, would you slowly begin turning around right where you are? And the Lord said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job? He said, I thought about him, but there's a hedge fence. Keep turning right where you are. There's a hedge fence of protection. This summer, you will not be in a car accident. God, I can't hear nobody. This summer, no bullet will enter your children's body. This, this summer, the tumor will not come back. This summer, your cancer cells will not reappear. This summer, you are not going on additional medication. There's a hedge fence of protection. You are verified in the kingdom. And those of you, your faith is connected to my faith. And you believe that God is going to fight off the works of the devil. Would you open up your mouth and give God your best shout of thanksgiving? I can't hear anybody. I said open up your mouth like you trust God. My time is up and I need you to be seated. My time is up. I really thought I was finishing. I just got a text message from Yahweh. Listen to me. Those of you in this room, you're already saved, you're anointed. And right through here, you have been going through a crazy attack on your life. Would you stand to your feet, please, those of you who just feel like you're under attack? Hallelujah. He's attacking everything. He's trying everything to break you. He's doing everything to frustrate you. Doing everything to slow you down. Doing everything to make you stop believing. Doing everything to make you give up your faith. The good news for those of you who are standing is the people around you are anointed. If you're seated beside somebody who's standing, I want you to break the assignment that has been unleashed on their life. I want you to just overwhelm them with hugs of affirmation and tell them it's getting ready to shift for you. Come on everybody, quickly, quickly. It's getting ready to shift for you. It's getting ready to shift for you. It's getting ready to shift for you. Now what I need, I need every person in the room who believes that every demon assigned to your house is going to be killed by Monday. I, I can't 
forgive you every person that your family been under warfare I need you to shout like God is getting ready to break you would you stand to your feet please stand to your feet please I'm going to open the doors of the church there's somebody in this room they're saying, Pastor, I need this kind of ministry. I need this kind of teaching. I need this kind of impartation. I need this flow of the Holy Spirit. That's who you are. That's where you are. Wherever you are in this room, please, sir, please, ma'am. Softly, minstrels, you're here and you know you need to get saved. You're here and you know you need to join the church. You hear, you know that your, your relationship with God is off. You ain't heard from him and, and he ain't been talking to you. Wherever you are in this room, please, very quickly, I don't have much time. I want you to come and give me your hand. I want you to give God your heart. Don't let nothing stop you. Push everything and everybody out the way till you get to this altar. If you're here in this room and you're saying, Pastor, this is the kind of glory I need in my life. This is the kind of connection I need from God. I need you to begin moving right now. Wherever it is that you are, you're saying, Pastor, I got to get saved. I need a church home. Would you come to me, please, right now? You're here in this place. This ain't the time for you to play possum, for you to be coy, for you to be shy. Your life and your destiny are swinging on the pendulum of your next decision. I need you, please. I need you to come. And I need you to do it quickly. You done wasted enough time. God needs you in this day. moment it does look better without you dad just post the picture just with us and at that com that point the conversation shifted from the partridge family to british parliament i'm indignant i'm offended i need to ask a group meeting how are y'all cutting me out the picture when i'm the only way y'all got here how you cut me out the picture? They didn't know y'all. They knew me. How you cut me out the picture when none of y'all Negroes got a driver's license? How you gonna get home and you cut me out? I fought, I fought, I fought. Ain't no way y'all photoshopping me out of my own picture. And I said that to say to some of you, that there are times in your life when you've had the same experience. You've been there for people. You open doors for them. You help them get on their feet. You invested in them. And then when the picture is produced, they want to Photoshop you and act like you are not a part of the process. People try to cut you out the picture when they forget you are the film, the flash, and the frame. That in your absence, the picture cannot exist. It's almost virtually impossible for you to see a picture on television or on a movie screen without acknowledging a prominent Jewish influence. For the fact of the matter is that both industries, movies and television, are heavily under Hebraic direction and leadership. I don't know whether you realize it or not, but almost every outlet of movie and television is owned by the Jewish community. NBC, ESPN, Disney, MGM, CBS, Century Fox, Columbia Pictures, 
Lowe's Theater, all under Jewish ownership. It's in its infancy, even until now, that the Jewish community owns 80% of all movies. Did you hear what I just said? 80% of all movies and programming comes under the production of Jewish owned houses. From the second film that was in fact nationally distributed, Gone with the Wind, to The Cosby Show, The Jeffersons, Different Strokes, Sanford and Son, all got black actors, but Jewish production. Stay with me. It is amazing to know, I'm getting ready to blow your mind, that only one in 700 characters on television, one in 700, I want you to have this, you make you the smartest person at work tomorrow, one in 700 characters on television are Jewish. Only one in 700. And they're the producers. They're the writers. They're the directors. They own the distribution. And only one in 700 are portrayed on TV. I'm not sure how you hold the camera, but can't see yourself. The Jewish community has held a deep-rooted fear that America wasn't ready to see Jews in the picture. Part of your problem is people aren't prepared to see you in another light. They can't picture you driving a foreign car unless you're doing something illegal. Hence driving while black. They can't picture you happy without them. So every time it looks like you're happy, they try to get back in the picture. They can't picture you getting the, the position without compromise. And that's why they consistently question, how did you get it? They don't understand the picture. Long before Seinfeld, David Letterman, or Larry David, the biggest comedian of the 40s was a man by the name of Danny Kaye. The CEO of MGM saw his act in the Catskills of New York and without a screen test signed him. Signed him up for a movie and made he and his family move from upstate New York to Hollywood. And when he got to Hollywood, it's getting ready to blow your mind, the directors that were Jewish said he looked too Jewish. I need you to conceptualize this. I need you to have it. He is not auditioning, watch this, in front of Nordics. He is auditioning in front of other Jews. And other Jews said he looked too Jewish. This is the 1940s. I need you to stay with me. And so the Jewish directors and Jewish producers asked him to get plastic surgery. Other Jews, watch this, said his nose was too Jewish. Switch it up. Change it. Danny Kay refused to do it. And they said, all right, we've got another idea. If you're not going to undergo plastic surgery, you're not going to get your nose fixed, dye your hair blonde. And he agreed to do that. Their thinking was, if you dye your hair blonde, people won't look at your nose. And they won't see you for your ethnicity. And they'll believe that you are a part of them. It is amazing that we are in 2017 and you got other black people who don't like your blackness. And they have an issue with you being authentic to yourself and have a problem when it is that you embrace your own lineage, your own heritage, and your own genealogy. The Bible Belt was unnerved 
Not just that they elected a black president, but that we had a dark skinned first lady. The internet exploded when Gabby Douglas was winning gold medals, but wouldn't use a straightening comb. The fashion industry was in an uproar, uproar when recently Miss Jamaica won second place in the Miss World contest and had the nerve to wear an afro. Gabby was body slammed because of her size didn't fit Eurocentric ideals that equates to stardom. Leslie on Saturday Night Live as a first black woman cast member has repeatedly been bullied by adults who can't stand that she actually looks African. Dallas traffic reporter had her body in fact the center of objectification from co-workers that went on Facebook who said her body type does not fit 6 o'clock noon. Whether they like it or not, we are made and shaped in the image and in the likeness of one God. If you're going to take me, you're going to have to take my full lips. If you want me, they come with curvy hips. If you're going to deal with me, it comes with crinkly hair. If you're going to take me, you're going to have to deal with it because it's man that looks at the outer appearance. It's God that looks at the heart. And I am not here to please man. I am here to celebrate God. And if in fact you cannot take my standard of beauty, then it is not my issue, it is your insecurity. I did baptism this morning while it is that you were just sleeping. I, I, I did baptism this morning and I'm blown away. I'm baptizing teenagers, 12, 13, 14 years old this morning. And all the boys that I baptized this morning got blonde hair. And all the girls got natural hair. What happens if I'm scared as the priest of the house that the males die will drip? But the girls have embraced their own identity. Where are we that in church I got to be self-conscious about how I'm made? You so insecure, you don't even know what I'm praying about and you throwing a whole blanket on me. <laughs> if you focus on my walk with God, you ain't focus on my skirt. You don't know what I just ran out of. If, if I cannot be me in church, where can I be me? I'm tired of having to adjust because of your own feelings of inadequacy, because of your own insecurity, when they announce who Jesus was prophetically, they didn't say Jesus is gonna have waves, red bottom shoes, Jordans and a Gucci belt. Said he had hair like lamb's wool, feet of bronze. Can you be anointed with nothing extra? with the way that you will create. Can you celebrate God when you look in the mirror? Are you always identifying what's wrong? You can never celebrate what's right. Have you gotten to the place that before you leave out of the house in the morning and you look in the mirror and say to yourself, I look like God. Do you know how powerful that is that I look like God and anybody who doesn't like how I look doesn't like who God is because I was made in his image and in his likeness. Entrepreneur Magazine swears that there is power in visualization. Visualization sends transmissions to the brain that feels like a real life occurrence. Greatest boxing champion in the world is Muhammad Ali. He's known for saying he envisioned himself as a champion before he ever got a belt. Muhammad Ali gave a lecture at Harvard University after it is that he refused to go to Vietnam. 
and the proctor at Harvard University introduced him as the world champion. He had already, Muhammad Ali had already had his belt stripped. And the president of Harvard University got behind the proctor and said, you made a mistake. He is not the world champion. He's the former champion. His belt is stripped. He ain't no champion. And Muhammad Ali got behind the president of Harvard University and said, I'm a champion with no belt. Because when I am a champion, I don't need other people to validate the worth of who it is that I am. And I, I feel like I'm preaching to some people at 11.30 this morning says, I'm a champion with no degree. I'm, I'm a champion with no Mercedes. I'm a champion with no mansion. I'm a champion not because of what you call me, but because of the fights that I've endured, because of the blows that I've taken. And in Despite all of that, I'm still standing. I am a champion because of how I see myself. It's amazing, ladies and gentlemen, that Michael Jordan envisioned himself of being a champion before he ever took a shot. I don't know whether you ignore it or not, but Michael Jordan was cut from the JV basketball team twice. And his coach said that he didn't have what it takes in order to be a champion. But he kept playing. And the question I've got to ask you is where would he have been if he listened to somebody in authority? He had to listen to his inner voice and say, even if you don't see me as great, I see myself as great. And I feel like I'm talking to some people that there, all your life folk have betted against you and that's why they keep losing is they never expected you to make it this far. But nobody said the road was going to be easy. I don't believe he's brought me this far. Leave me now. Jim Carrey, one of the greatest comedians to ever be on the silver screen. His father told him that he wasn't going to make it. His own biological father said he wasn't funny. Jim Carrey then pulled and packed up his stuff and moved to California without his family medicine. An amazing thing that he did while he's a struggling comedian and being a waiter during the day and working in comedy clubs at night, he wrote his father a million dollar check. Sent it back to his father and said, I'm going to tell you when to cash it. But I need you to hold on to it because a day is coming where God is going to honor my gift even when you didn't believe in it. I'm talking to 80 of you who are in this room. God says, I don't care what your family thinks about you. When your mother and your father forsake you, that's when I step in to lift you up. The reason why you've been under so much attack is you different than everybody else in your family. But I need you to tell all of them, get ready for a check. Because God is getting ready to perform a miracle right in your eyes. I know you didn't think I was going to make it, but God made me a promise. I see myself and to this day Jim Carrey is the highest paid comedian having not done a movie in four years God help me I want you to know your value watch this even when you're not working some of y'all are getting ready to miss this you don't need to understand your job does not define you it is their privilege to have somebody as brilliant and gifted as you are if you get fired then that ain't where you were supposed to be god got something else in mind and in store for you you got to start picturing yourself hallelujah thank you holy god Hallelujah. I said, you got to start picturing yourself. Hallelujah. I don't need you to turn to your neighbor. I ain't talking to them. I'm talking to you. Hallelujah. I said, picture yourself 
as a captain of industry picture yourself as being a supervisor picture yourself y'all ain't saying nothing is being debt free picture yourself as a homeowner and not a renter picture your name on the side of buildings picture your children going to the best schools that Maryland has to offer picture yourself flying in to do consultation and flying back out before the sun goes down picture yourself taking your mama off of her job and telling her I don't want to see you labor like this after all you did for our family picture yourself writing a check for your nieces and nephews tuition because you got trifling siblings who don't even believe that their children can get to the next level picture yourself never asking nobody for nothing but God giving you the desire of your heart picture yourself buying a house with no money down but telling the realtor I'm paying for it cash picture yourself that when you buy the car you won't need a co-signer but you're getting it cause that's what you want picture yourself Picture yourself only working seven to nine months a year. God, I just said something. I ain't talking about no three days. I need you to have three months off. Your expertise is so valuable. I need you down south for the winter. I don't know how many of y'all got that kind of faith. But those of you that picture yourself in a better place in 2018 than you were for 2017. I need you to give God glory for the picture you just had of yourself. Would you praise him for it? Nothing is going to disrupt your picture. Hallelujah. I feel God in this room. I said nothing is going to disrupt your picture. Hallelujah. This is a good time for me to say it to you. Nothing is going to smear the picture that you got in your mind. The Lord made a promise to Joseph that you are going to be the ruler of this region. Your family is going to end up working for you. And before Joseph knew it, he's in the bottom of a pit. Do you know why Joseph didn't commit suicide? It's because while he was in the pit, he told himself, this ain't in the picture. This ain't what God showed me. He gets out of that pit and is falsely accused. He goes to jail for something he never did. But while he's in that jail, do you know why he didn't become an alcoholic? It's while he looking in the jail, he said, this ain't in the picture of what God promised me. He gets out of jail and ends up being a waiter right in the White House. But he said to himself, this ain't what God promised me. And then finally somebody recognized the gift in his life and he become the secretary of agriculture God told me to tell 500 of you this been one of the roughest years of your life but this ain't the final picture God is getting ready to show you something that eyes have not seen and ears have not I know hallelujah I got spectators in the room, y'all forgive us. I only need you to worship if you see something. Come on, I can't hear nobody. I said only bless him if you see something. And some of you are only shouting over tangible stuff. I need you to worship God, why pastor? Like I see my family members in perfect health. God, I can't hear nobody. I see a picture of my brother not in jail, of my sister not in the street, of my grandmother not in the hospital. I got a different picture. Hallelujah. I once was young now. I'm getting older. Be seated, please. Um, 
Hallelujah. I got the picture. Hallelujah. We, hallelujah. I got the picture. Do y'all see it? I'm, I'm preaching about you. Do you see it? Do you see it for yourself? I can't hear nobody. Trouble can't last always. Do you see it? You know, I'm in a generation now that you all take pictures right on your phone. Right from your phone. You post them right to Facebook. Straight to Instagram. And so the problem with this generation is that we want pictures with no process. I'm figure skating between two generations as a part of hip hop culture and the millennial generation is that my generation, we didn't grow up with iPhones. We didn't have Samsung, didn't have Galaxy. Uh, just getting ready to separate the whole congregation because some of y'all don't even know what I'm talking about. It's gonna sound like I'm in the Smithsonian Museum. When I was growing up, we had something called Photomat. I know y'all don't even know what I'm talking about. It'd be right in the middle of the parking lot of the mall. They didn't have a kiosk in the mall. And here's what's crazy, y'all, is that you went, drove up the photo man. Stay with me. I know this is relic. I know it's old timely. Say what was crazy is you go in the photo man and uh, you had rolls of film. You had rolls of film. And here's what's crazy, y'all, is that you had to put your film in an envelope. When you put the film in the envelope, you had to put your name on the envelope. And here's what's crazy is that you had to identify what wasn't even developed yet. But I claim that it's mine even before I see it. I'm talking to somebody in this room. There's some stuff you've been working on. It ain't finished yet, but God said put your name on it. Hallelujah. You got to believe by faith. Even if I don't have it yet, I claim that it's going to be mine. We dropped it off at Photomat, put it in the envelope, put your name on it, and here's what's crazy, y'all. His Photomat wasn't even as good, big as this pulpit. It's probably the size of where the musicians were, and we couldn't even see what was happening in the development process. But I'm gonna tell you what happened in order for the picture to be developed. You dropped it off, watch this, in a small nail slip, put it in an envelope with your rolls of film in it, and then you drove off, and they told you, come back for it. I got to tell you this, this is what's happening while it is that you can't see the picture. is the only way the picture could be developed. Stay with me, the only way it could be developed, it has to come in a dark room. See, some of you will never be developed because you ain't been through a dark season. You got to go through a dark season of your life where you're not sure what's happening. You're not sure what's taking place, but you got to say in the words of our ancestors, there's a bright side somewhere and what it is that the developer would do y'all is that the developer would take the film watch this and make sure the room was dark and then throw the film in something that's gonna blow your mind and when they threw it in it's called solution hallelujah what do you do when you can't see what God is working on how do you move forward when it looks like there's no way of escape and God told me to tell 50 of you while you're in a dark season he's working on a solution I can't hear nobody in here well how does the producer work and cultivate the film if the room is dark and it's thrown in solution there's only one piece of light in the room and y'all ain't gonna believe me but the light is red because it's symbolizes the blood what can wipe away my sin nothing but the blood of Jesus what can make me whole again nothing but the blood of Jesus you would go back to photo man and you'd go back in an hour and they said because of your patience because of how long you waited because of the process we gonna bless you with double exposure in other words you getting ready to get twice of what you paid for is there anybody here that believes this is my season to get double for my trouble I need 
want you to high five your neighbor and tell them double is coming. You've been in this place long enough and the going's been kind of tough, but the struggle is almost over. It's almost over for you. And the thing I loved about Photoshop, about Photo Man, is that when you went, you open up the envelope, you inspected the pictures, and you only take the pictures that you like. If you don't like the picture, leave it with the developer. That's why I'm here today. There's some stuff you've been looking at. God said, don't take it into the new year, but leave it with Jesus. You don't like your income, leave it with the master. You don't like where you live, leave it with the savior. You don't like what you drive, leave it with our God. But when I come back, by next year this time, everything is gonna look better. Everything is gonna get brighter. Give somebody a high five and tell them, get the picture. The one thing that I love about Photoshop is that in Photoshop, you can take people out of the picture. But in Photoshop, you can add people to the picture. And I stopped by this morning to tell 50 of you, you just been added into the picture of those of you that can say I'm more than a conqueror. Greater is he that is in me than he. Be seated for the last time, please. I'm in the picture of the wealthiest people that ever lived in Baltimore. I'm in the picture. The apostle in his epistle to the Corinth said what you've been dealing with in 1 Corinthians 13, he says in verse number nine, what you've been dealing with is you have been living through a half prophecy. You have only seen part of what God has promised you. Hallelujah. But 2018, you get ready to see all of it. Hallelujah. I don't want just a piece of the promise. I want everything he promised me. I'm, I'm talking to the wrong church. Is there anybody here that believes there's a prophecy over your life? And I need God to expose what he's promised me. When I was a child, I thought as a child. I understood as a child. But now that I'm mature. I look at the picture differently. And the picture that I now have in maturity is success is not how much money I have in the bank. The picture that I now have in my mind is what validates my worth is not the square footage of my home. What says that I've accomplished is not driving a German car. I've put all of that aside. I now look in the mirror clearly and I see that the picture of who I am is that I'm finally at peace. I know we don't shout about that, but I, there ought to be something that ushers us to contentment. God, I want to be at a place and a station in my life where I'm actually at peace. I don't want to have to be chasing the paper my whole life. I don't want to always feel inadequate and insufficient. God, give me enough to be at peace. And God is saying, I finally get the picture. It's finally available to you. And when it is that you get that picture, watch what he says, I'm still in Corinthians. It's only at that moment that you're able to see God 
face to face. You will not be able to see him as long as you don't like that you look like him. But when I'm able to look in the mirror and I see God in it, then I'm now prepared to walk into my destiny. I'm going to do this if I can, please. There's so many of you. Hallelujah. Who need God's divine intervention. And it's not off of drugs. It's not off of alcohol. I need you to hear me. It's not even from binge eating. I want to say this to you, and I'm talking to adults now. When I was growing up, this conversation, this language we'd reserve for people who are trapped in the abyss of puberty. You know how many adults have low self-esteem? How many adults reject their own body type? How many adults reject their own self-image? How are you going to be a success when you don't love you? I want God to help you to see yourself different. Because you can't go into this year, to this new year, with a rejection of self. Surgery is not going to make you beautiful when you're ugly on the inside. You're trying to get all different piercings so people will focus on that and not see your face. What's the point of you changing your hair if you won't ever change your mind? Shakespeare, the runaway theologian, said, to thine own self be true. And I want you, watch this, I know you love God, you wouldn't be here. But I, I, I want you, what the church never talks about, I want you to be able to fall in love with you. Because if you don't know how to love you, nobody else will. My time is quickly coming to an end, but I feel a burden to reach you on, on this afternoon. Those of you who are in this room, you don't consider yourself beautiful. You reject what you look like. You don't think that you measure up, you add up. I want you to come meet me at this altar. I want to pray for you, please. No judgment. I just want to pray for you because I want God to clear out the mirror. Come on, meet me, please. Come on, meet me. There's still some others of you that I need you to come quickly. I was in a conversation on yesterday. How can you be competent in yourself living in an Instagram era? Everybody got shapes, curves. Everybody in shape. Everybody Gucci down. Everybody on trips. And you watching that all day, looking at it all day, going through it all day, all day. And while you keep doing this, your self-image is doing this. It's doing this. I want you to meet me here, please. I want you to meet me right where it is that you are. Hallelujah. There ain't enough bundles in the world for you to get your brain back. There ain't enough contact lenses in the world that'll change your perspective. I need you to meet me. I'm still three more of you I'm waiting on. I don't care who's sitting around you, who's next to you. I need you to come, please. <clears throat> Go out to dinner on Friday with my daughters. And uh, we're in a restaurant. My 13-year-old says, I just want a salad. Our sister's killing the whole game. They eating pizza and ice cream. I said, oh, you, you eating healthy now? My 13-year-old said, no, I'm on a diet. Huh? What you mean? So I says, I'm on a diet. I'm one of the biggest ones in my class. 
And I, I need to lose weight. 13 is already enveloped in body image. I don't know where you are. I need you to come meet me here, please. And I, and to grab my daughter by both shoulders and look her in the eye as her father who created her. You're beautiful. You look great the way that you are. Come on, me. don't play me. I need you at this altar, please. I'm waiting on one more of you. I don't know where it is that you are. You don't even know with every step you take, the weight is going to come off of you. The burden is going to come off of you. You can't go into a new year feeling like this. I need you to go into the new year saying, I accept God's plan for my life. Y'all really ain't gonna say nothing. How dare you sit there and act like you ain't never had a moment where you had to reevaluate who it is that you are. I'm grateful for you. Stretch your right hands of faith. They're still coming. This room is time. They're still coming. Are y'all gonna clap for them? I bet if you give God glory, some more will come. I just believe that if you start giving God glory, somebody around you will feel encouraged, will be inspired, will be empowered. If I can't be honest here, where can I be honest? Come on, keep clapping your hands, they still coming. We make excuses for how we're built, for what we look like. When I was growing up, they don't even have it no more. When I was growing up, they used to have a size section for boys, husky. Y'all remember that? Yeah. <laughs> they didn't got away with that. Now you got 13 year olds in the big and tall section. It's, it's hard, watch this, for you to be out talking to the parents now. You know how hard it is to dress a 12 year old? Ain't no ribbons, ain't no barrettes. You got 13 year olds who want to be Instagram models. You four feet tall. But what is my expectation of my perspective of where I see myself? I want you, would all of you, would you take each other by the hand, please? I want to pray for you. Hallelujah. God, I pray for the most beautiful people in this church who are at this altar. I thank you, dear Lord, that over the